Hey everybody, it's Anna J. Walner with the Author Library again, and uh, today I am continuing the um, marketing part of uh, this series. So what I wanted to talk about is now, after you have gotten your manuscript complete and you're ready to send it out to an editor, Absolutely highly recommend an editor. Jeff DeMarco is an editor. Uh, I've spoken with him on the channel before, um, but find someone that you can work with who's not going to change your voice. But working with an editor is an essential part of preparing your manuscript and polishing it, giving it that, that, that final polish for for sending it out to reviewers and sending it out um, to be published so make sure that you do invest some time in searching for an editor you may want to do this while your book is still in um, in the editing while you're still editing your your book and that way you can kind of get a feel send them one or two chapters and get a feel for their editing style uh, barring that, uh, I would also highly recommend utilizing a critique partner. And this is where the writing community can come in exceptionally beneficial. So the writing community is an excellent place, whether it is on um, Twitter, which is fantastic, or um, on Facebook, which I've not delved into quite nearly as uh, voraciously as I have on Twitter, but uh, you can find people, it's, it's all about networking. So don't be afraid to reach out to people who write in the same genre that you do and ask if they would be interested in being a critique partner. Now, you think that's bad advice because why? Because uh, we're going to steal each other's ideas. No, that's not there is a level of integrity i think uh amongst authors that or at least i i there is with me and i hope that there is there w with with other authors so i don't see that as being an issue um my critique partner i did find in the writing community and um we do write the same genre so it's i think exceptionally beneficial for uh me to bounce those ideas off of them and the manuscript itself so that because they have a unique understanding of my um my my character my type of characters and so uh and then once you have finished doing that then i would highly suggest even after even after having it professionally edited i would i would get a beta reading group together and this is where Facebook can come in helpful and we'll discuss the uh, the different pros and cons of each social media uh, website and why you should be why you need to I hate saying should but uh, why you should could <laughs> why it's beneficial the pros and cons of each one why it's beneficial to be on each social media website and why that would be and what what you can get from 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 that social media um interaction and what you necessarily can't <clears throat> with that in mind uh beta readers are going to be people that you select who are in your demographic so uh as a young adult fantasy writer i can i'm just talking about myself and what i write because that's what comes naturally so uh I'm not going to pick someone who writes, uh, his, who, who, who enjoys reading historical romance, or I'm not going to pick um, someone who enjoys reading nonfiction political, um, nonfiction political books. I'm just not, because they're not going to be interested in what it is that I'm offering them to read. So 
joining those groups, those specific groups in Facebook can help you to find your beta reading group. Now make sure that they do sign a, um, a NDA or non-disclosure, which is called a non-disclosure agreement, uh, where they agree to not share your manuscript. Uh, of course, by this time, it has already been copyrighted uh because you're in you you've already sent it to to it's it's already beautiful and and been sent to the uh, uh editor and uh all of that so you have the finished product it's been copyrighted so make sure that when you if it's in word you can actually you can put a uh watermark that says copyrighted uh through the manuscript and then pdf that that way they cannot change that that copyright watermark so uh that that's that's a little tip there if you're concerned about sending your manuscript out for people to beta read and you don't want to send it in word um then just convert it to pdf put that that watermark on there convert it to pdf and they can't change it so uh so that's a, a tip there but take their feedback so you may uh, you may be surprised by readers who actively read in the genre that you write. I know that you read there too, but they may be tired of seeing that um, certain trope that that you've explored, or they may say, "I'm not understanding what you meant by by this." I'm I'm not, you know until you explained it here i had no idea what you were talking about and you can go back and say uh okay so the, there's something not coming across there's something not resonating there's something that i'm not fully explaining i'm doing more uh telling rather than showing um and they can kind of help you along the way on on that and a critique partner will do the same thing so as i said um do do make sure that uh, that you find the right fit for you who is going to and it does help to find someone that you can rely on who writes the same genre because they're just going to get it they're going to get uh, what you're trying to do and where you're going and the type of character that you're writing a lot more so than say someone who writes um, in historical romance um, if if you pick someone who is a young adult fantasy writer I'm not going to be able to give you a lot of helpful insight into your character arcs character development storyline because I mean I can help I can help as far as punctuation um, uh, sentence flow and structure go but uh, as far as being really helpful in that area of historical romance I'm not going to say this doesn't seem historically accurate this doesn't seem to me as if you know uh, Abigail is really going to would be doing this in this certain time period so you see where I'm going with this so it does actually help to form those friendships with and I won't say friendships um, not necessarily friendships but uh, uh, networks it's it's all about networking social media is not only for advertising but also for networking a lot of people that I have met on uh, Twitter and through other social media platforms have been exceptionally helpful when it comes to networking and finding additional resources so don't shy away from reaching out to those in the writing community C contrary to what has circulated uh, we are not competitors uh, we are in fact if done correctly if with the right attitude motivation and mindset we are in fact collaborators because no one can take your story no one can take your voice they can take your characters and your storyline but they will write something completely different and the fact of the matter is this is why we talk about building a brand and building a readership base uh, in the first video is because your readers will be loyal to reading what you write you you kind of you kind of have a um, a readership already there so so that's one of the benefits of building that readership base so don't don't go into this thinking well I can't I can't share things with other people because I don't want them to still and then they're going to 
No, I mean, 99 times out of 100, they're not going to. I've had experiences, bad experiences, um, with one reviewer um, uh, on a different social media platform. Uh, and, uh, you know, lesson, lesson learned uh, to, you know, just be a little more mindful and a little more careful about uh, the things that you share whenever with 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 people you don't have a, a connection with that that you've talked to for an extended period of time because there's there's just not that loyalty there so uh that that is a lesson that i did learn but it it, it was nothing dramatic traumatic or uh n nothing that that threw my uh my plan into complete and utter chaos so so with that being said, um, you'll want to, as soon as you get your final manuscript or as close to it as, as, as you have, um, I would certainly start sending out for reviews. Now, uh, Kirsty's bedside book review is fantastic. She is a great reviewer. She posts them on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and she is amazing and wonderful to work with. So kind and so sweet. And, but, uh, my second book will be coming out for pre-release in July of this year. And she's already booked until July. So, uh, as soon as you have that manuscript and it's as polished as you believe it will get or as close to it as you can get it, then go ahead and start sending those out for ARCs because, uh, and to, to reviewers because they do have quite a long standing TBR list. I started sending them out in November and there is still one, uh, reviewer that I'm waiting to hear back from. <clears throat> I will say, make sure that your reviewers are reputable as well. So it's always a bit of a toss up um, when you get someone that comes into your inbox and says, hey, I, w I would love to read your book and I, um, I'll promote it or I'll so just be, uh, I, I can't stress that enough to be uh, cautious whenever it comes to people who jump in your uh, direct messages, promising uh, things, just do your due diligence. Um, like you would anything else if anyone is asking for your manuscript. Of course, it's copyrighted at this point, so you do have that, um, you do have that protection there, but the issue is that there are what are called pirates, and they do take manuscripts and change the name, change the cover, and throw them up on Amazon, and it takes a little while for you to find them. So um, I've, I've seen that being mentioned in the writing community that that that's that that has happened that that's been done so just all these things to keep in mind but make sure that you go ahead and get those arcs out as soon as possible book funnel i have not taken a look at uh i've not gone that route i know a lot of people do do it i think there's a cost associated with it please if you know uh if you've used it please leave your comments uh in the description or in the comments area below. I think there's another one as well um, that I've seen people recommend and I as I said I've not I've not used that so I sent out either physical arcs or um, PDF arcs with the watermark when I was um, when I was sending those to reviewers so just something to keep in mind paid reviews there are a couple of services that I would recommend whenever it comes to paid reviews. Um, Literary Titan is one. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I won the Golden Award there. But, uh, but, but they do do a pretty good job of getting your review to you uh, within the time frame that they promise. Uh, Rosie Amber. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, Amber Rose. Um, no, that's the actress. Um uh whispering stories blog uh and then of course Kirsty's uh bedside book review uh and then do do your due diligence on your own some people are will be closed to reviews uh because their tbr list is just that exhaustive and they can't um they just don't have the the, the resources and the time at that moment uh, readers favorite is another one i believe they have a free option and a paid option publishers weekly is a paid option uh if you'd like to go that route 
Uh, it is featured in their magazine, although it is a very small little blurb in their magazine uh, and on online. Uh, Kirkus, I did try that. Um, I spent over $300 on that review and it was a... I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, they, it's, you, you can't use the entire review, uh, because, because every review that, um, that I've ever, uh, seen, they pick apart some, some small piece, and then they give you good feedback on, it's, it's a 50-50 thing, so, so you can't use the entire review, and, um, uh, advertising, which they'll want you to do through them is, uh, highly expensive. There are different options out there for you to, that, that you can better utilize your money, that $1,500 or however, however much, uh, they, they want you to spend on advertising can be so much better utilized, uh, in a different, in a different venue. So, uh, so those are a couple of things to think of, but make sure that you definitely do get on those reviewers radar because they will put out lists and, um, they will put out things that they recommend. Uh, they'll post a Goodreads for you. They will post on, on Amazon if the book is already available, which in my case it is not, but if it is, then you can always, I think, um, with, uh, I think you can, you can email them and see if, say, hey, my book is available now, and they might be kind enough to go ahead and post that on Amazon for you. But I do know that there is a way for you to put, um, if you go into KDP for the Kindle version, you can actually put in reviewers, um, uh, there's a place there where you can add those in your author dashboard on Amazon. So make sure that you have your author's dashboard, your author page on Amazon set up as well. So in the next video, we'll talk about a few more things, including the benefits of each publisher, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, Ingram Spark, Draft Digital, etc. And I also want to hear um, your experience with some of those companies as well. So stay tuned and I'll see you here in just a bit.